All right, guys, reports have come out that AMD X570 motherboards are going to cost significantly more than the X470 boards that have been out. Does this mean AMD is going to start seriously ripping off customers? No, I don't even think so. And we are going to discuss why right now, but I am also going to mention just one minor concern that I still think we should keep in the back of our minds. Hey guys, Hardware Hound here, and so I wanted to nip this little news report in the, in the bud, so to speak, because I feel like it's, I mean, I looked at some comment sections and I felt like it was already hyping up a lot of anger and irritation and stuff. And I'm like looking at this thinking, this is not a big deal. So basically what happened was the MSI CEO had an interview and I can't even find the video anymore. So it makes me think that this probably was not something that anybody really wanted out. But he basically was talking about how AMD's X570 boards are going to be significantly more money than the X470s. Now, he said a couple of quotes here, and this is where I think, honestly, as a CEO of a company, I don't know if it was like language barrier though, or so, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far into the reasoning why, but as a CEO of a company, I feel like these are things you shouldn't have said, you know, in general. One of the things he says, so I don't think that AMD is a company that wants to sell low cost here, low cost there. Um, he specifically says AMD wants, which is that kind of mind reading thing. And how does he know what AMD wants to do or doesn't do? So when he says that, I don't think AMD wants to sell low cost here, or low cost there, it already makes him sound like we are after money now because we have performance and we can. Um, the other thing he said was something along the lines of AMD wants to put this X570 motherboard in higher segmentation. So in other words, they want to be, they want to be known as the quality high performance brand now and not just the budget gamer brand. It's kind of what it feels like that implies. Now he didn't specifically say that, right? But it's very easy for people with an emotional reaction to take it and run with it. I don't think these statements were the best for him to say in an interview, but let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and the fact that we don't know, I couldn't find an interview, I don't know that there's any bad blood between MSI and AMD, AMD and I highly doubt that there is. So let's just worry about our concerns as consumers, right? What is this going to mean for us? So first off, let's just talk about why these statements are completely false in general if they are taken out of context. So for starters, the X570 chipset, of course it's gonna cost more. <laughs> like, this, this isn't even a question. The chipset is a very much higher power chipset in and of itself. It runs at 10 watts, which you know, you think, well, 10 watts, what's the big deal? Normal chipsets run at three watts. So we already have a lot more technology going on. We have full PCI four lanes, which yeah, that's gonna cost a lot more. So of course, just on a pure manufacturing basis, the chipset's gonna, gonna cost a little extra. But here's the thing, guys, and this is why this makes perfect sense. The X570 chipset, I mean, any X, you know, 470 or 370, they never really were meant for mainstream, right? They're meant for people who want to do, like, dual, triple graphics cards and want to have, like, raid arrays of high-end storage devices, like NVMe raids or, or solid-state raids. Really, more like NVMe raids. That is not the average person. The average person who's going to have a graphics card, probably some form of solid state drive, like one NVMe or one solid state, and maybe like a secondary gain drive that's a hard drive, they don't need all these features. It's way, way too much overkill. So those people can use X470 and do just fine and still have more than they need, right? And because the PCI4 lanes, some of those are built into the chip themselves, even X470 boards will get to benefit from some of those PCI4 lanes, where if you want all the PCI Express 4.0 lanes, that's when you need X570. Most people would never need that. Um, 
I think the other issue, though, is is that if AMD is going after the big bucks, they've already shown like their 16 core, 32 thread gaming processor, 749 bucks. Now, yes, it's a lot of money for a processor, but for that many cores and threads to be a gaming, I mean that felt to me like a really reasonable price for such a high-end processor. One I personally would never need for anything I do. I mean, even with video rendering, it would be complete overkill. So I guarantee you most gamers aren't going to need that. They need the single thread performance, which means a 3600X is going to be great for most gamers out there. 4K gamers, maybe go for the 8 cores. But most of you gamers, if you're gaming at 1440p or 1080, yeah, grab a 3600X or 3600. You're going to do great. So, yeah, that, I don't think they're doing that. Plus, their Navi graphics cards came out 449 and 379. So, they're clearly hitting at some good value there for the money. And then, you know, going back to the motherboards, though, we've got another big, huge issue that when we're talking about how expensive X570s are going to be, we haven't even heard of any announcements for B550. Now, I'm going to assume that AMD is going to go to a B550. And 550 has, well, any of the X50 boards, so 450 or 350, they've always been cut down some features that most people like gamers don't need and make a board that's less expensive because of that. So I guarantee you B550 is going to probably cut back some of the PCI Express 4.0 lanes because you're not going to be the kind of person who's going to do NVMe raids. And they're probably going to cut back like the amount of lanes that you would need to do like dual or triple graphics cards. But they'll still have some good overclocking VRMs and much cheaper costs when those come out. But this is just the high end stuff that AMD has announced. So. Already, I think these statements could be misleading and taken as misleading even because they're not representative of what AMD does. Guys, here's what it boils down to. If AMD ever gets around to saying one statement, then I think we have something to worry about. When I was at my, like one of my first CESs, I got to meet Intel and I remember talking to one of the reps and I was basically, he was asking me what I use and I was like, well, I have an FX 8350 because I can't really afford better. And he said in response to me was like, well, you know, we can charge a lot because we can. And I just sat there and I was like, you know, that's a little uncomfortable. Here I am. Uh, I, you know, I'm married. I didn't have any kids yet. But, you know, just getting fresh off to, to life. Don't have a lot of money. Can't afford a lot. And here's an Intel guy saying, yeah, we charge a lot of money because we can. Screw you. Whoa, man. Come on. What about people who try hard in life, but they just can't afford a lot? If AMD ever gets to this point where they're saying, we're charging a ton because we can, I think we need to be worried at that point. But there is nothing that AMD has done that even remotely indicates that. I have been following AMD before when Ryzen was nothing but a rumor and most people didn't believe it was going to turn into anything. But when I saw, oh man, this is the moment, guys. Lisa Su, right when she became CEO, before she became CEO, what did AMD launch? The FX 9590, right? <laughs> Remember that disaster? Let's charge a ton of money for a 5 gigahertz processor because it's the first one, even though this performance is still going to suck because FX didn't have anything on the Intel stuff. Lisa Su comes in, she starts kind of reorganizing things, starts heading towards the path of Ryzen. Now, some of that might have been set in place before, but I do remember that shortly after they released the FX 8370. It boosted clocks a little bit, gave a little more performance, but was at a very nice low price. They also dropped the price of the FX 9590 pretty shortly after. Guys, this company has been designed around what can we do for the people out there who are building computers. I mean, it's just clear. Their pricing structures, yeah, they're charging more now for some good high-end performance, but they still have great options. So even though there isn't a B550 board yet, like I said, you can use an X470. I mean, that's what I plan to do. So AMD is doing things that I feel like are trying to 
geared towards high performance PC builders. Yeah, there's people who will spend $750 on a processor and they won't think twice about it. And AMD is going to be able to finally reach those people. They need to brand themselves a little bit as, hey, we are the high performance kings now. Why? Because there's some people who they don't care about numbers. They just want to know, well, who's perceived as the best company? Oh, it's AMD now? I'm buying AMD. Me and you probably sitting here like, what? Why would anybody do that? Aren't you going to read reviews? Look at but see, a lot of people don't do that. But AMD also has a great portfolio for people like me who's like, you only have $250 that you could really budget to spend for a processor? Well, here's a 3600X. You can use it backwards compatible on the board you currently have. That has good VRMs, by the way, and will handle it fine. And it's gonna give you great gaming and multi-threading performance. I mean, six cores, we've got 12 threads. We're not doing any of that garbage where we're cutting out hyper-threading just because, yeah. So I don't think AMD is there, but if we ever hear statements from AMD saying, well, because we can in terms of how much they're charging, I think then we need to watch out. And in, then we'd be relying on, you know, Intel to give them competition again. And that's a weird statement to say we got to rely on Intel. So guys, I hope that clears up your concerns. Basically, the point is, I'm not trying to rag on the MSI CEO because I don't run companies. Um, I'm just trying to point out that if you're freaking out because you think AMD is about ready to take advantage of you as a consumer, there is nothing to worry about yet. But in the years to come, if AMD starts saying things and charging the prices up because we can, not because there's actual technological advances, not because there's actual new expenses they have to cover, then we should worry. I haven't seen even the tiniest ounce of that in anything that's happened in the past week with all the new announcements. Nothing to worry about, guys. So I hope that video makes you feel better. That's really the only reason why I wanted to do it. So this has been the Hardware Hound. I will catch you later.